Hello fellow unicorns, my name is Mina and welcome to Mystic Arts channel. I am a professional manga teacher and a lot of you guys liked what I did with my very own evil uh, version of Snow White and this is why this time I wanted to approach uh, the theme of other Disney characters in my own vision, of course as a commissioned piece for my patrons. In the upper right corner you can find the link to my Patreon page and you will be able to to download my line art of this work as well as hundreds of others for just two dollars a month on my patreon page so check that out and please subscribe as for today's design i wanted to have a version of tinkerbell uh, the way i personally see her because today's generations uh, are growing up on a different kind of a tinkerbell character than my generation did um, when i was a young girl uh, actually tinkerbell was not as innocent and nice and well-wishing as character as she is today and i wanted to show that part of her she was very possessive of her Peter and she almost tried to uh, give Wendy to mermaids I think or just drown her or just try to kill her in many ways so she was not uh, ready to share her boy and she definitely didn't even like try to hide it she obviously was possessive and didn't even care if Wendy would <laughs> literally die so this was very hardcore for me as a kid and that's why I remember Tink as a maleficent fairy and fairies in general mythology were not as good at benevolent creature as they are portrayed now they um they would like literally uh hunt people by luring them into traps and setting up misfortune for them so fairies were not perceived as well wishing and well uh well giving you good luck kind of a creature as for the drawing for today, I wanted to do a mixed technique I see a lot of people on YouTube and DeviantArt are using. As you can see, my line art was consisted out of black and gray lines, and you will see that the black areas and black lines leave a completely different um, kind of a line as compared to the gray, gray ones and I wanted to do her skin with Copics because Copics have consistency in color and shading and I really didn't want her skin to look patchy. I got a little bit of bleeding on the black line so that's something I uh, eventually fixed later on. But for consistency on her skin coverage, I wanted to use alcohol-based markers. As for the rest of the drawing, I will be using watercolors, highly pigmented watercolors, but also give you guys some useful tips on working with watercolors. First of all, you should definitely not start working with watercolors unless you have a piece of paper on the side readied to test out every shade of color you want to get before you put your paintbrush on the paper. This is something very important because you don't want to realize you have a wrong shade before you apply it. Uh, uh, up till then point it might be too late. Uh, also when you do watercolors make sure to remember that your current shade is at least three shades darker than it will eventually be as the end result. Uh, as you can see, I even poured some salt on top of her dress to give her a sort of a sparkly, grainy kind of um, texture. This is a trick a lot of water uh, watercolor artists use to get an uh, interesting kind of uh, texture or just maybe a 3D looking texture on their characters. And I 
personally thought that salt, which will uh, take up some of the water on the color, will make an interesting texture on her dress. Uh, I'm using a flat brush to draw a cracked mirror behind her to represent her um, bad qualities such as possessiveness and egotistical but self-harming egotistical behavior in some sort. And I usually have this thing for characters with pointy ears and uh, no eyes well no uh, no pupils so her eyes will be left out white to symbolize her um, mean nature and she's sitting on a pin cushion and in the original movie you can see her being stuck in a drawer with all of these sewing uh, equipment and needles and threads so I wanted to show her um, most evil side when she was stuck in that drawer so she's sit is sitting there and contemplating her revenge upon Wendy and uh, I think she has su such a huge potential as an evil character but since she is a Disney princess of a sort um, she is not allowed to be evil but I would personally really like to see what it would be like to have Tinkerbell as evil, but I guess the closest thing she is to evil is in the original movie. So if you guys haven't seen that, um, make sure you do and just see how her nature changes from the that movie to the movies we are seeing today with Tinkerbell. And of course, um, there's also a big thing about drawing with and making art with watercolors. Um, you need to go in layers. Um, it can be a really big pain in the neck for layers to dry, for layers to work with each other, to have a consistent area of color. And when you want to make textures, you need to plan them up front. And as you can see right now, all of my colors have somehow blended with each other they're not making any kind of contrast so I always have to keep adding more and more and more uh, darker layers and just dabbing the new texture on top of the old texture I'm using a piece of paper um, tissue to just dab some of the parts in and I'm trying to replicate a dark gray maybe even black area which is the most uh, annoying part in trying to work with watercolors because when you're trying to make a black color it's always ending up looking gray it's too light for black color and it's a big pain in the neck to just get some contrast out of uh, watercolor paintings even with the most pigmented uh, colors and watercolor sets it's always the same so if you guys want to make a clear black area then my suggestion is to go and just uh, fill that area up front with a waterproof CD marker or something. That's the best way for you to get the darkest shade. Uh, for the rest of the drawing, I'm just uh, using dark uh, brown to fill up the darkest areas and hoping that this will boost up some sort of a contrast for the drawing. Um, and of course, there's always highlights to the rescue to bring the entire drawing into a more pop-up world and I'm just using my uh, well standard uh, swirly technique to draw out her fair wings because they are pure magic and I just wanted to show that through these swirls and just uh, using white paint um, you can literally use any white paint. It can be acrylic white paint. It can be um, wash. It can just. It's what's important is that the paint is water dilutable. Otherwise, your paintbrush might be destroyed forever if the paint itself is not dilutable in water and the the paintbrush can that way and not be able to get cleaned so always test out your equipment before working with it otherwise your favorite brush may be destroyed or unusable so definitely pay attention to what kind of art supplies you have and what can be mixed together and what is not supposed to be mixed together and of course white 
uh, shimmer on the metallic parts is always a good uh, way to go with drawings like these and just wherever you can find a place to put white dots or just white um, little details the more effective your overall work will be and this is a trick I proudly use and I love using all of the time so it's my warmest recommendation and I really hope you guys like what I did today I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you want to learn how to draw manga check out my book manga crash course available in English French Serbian and Chinese